namo bhagavate vasudevaya I'm going to be reading this morning from Canto 3, Chapter 24, <clears throat> Texts 18 and 19. The title of the chapter is The Renunciation of Kardama Muni. So where all of this is going towards the end of the chapter, the conclusion of the chapter is after completing his duties, fulfilling everything in a very fantastic way in his family life, Kardamoni is going to return back to the forest and continue his practices, devotional practices, meditation, and so forth. So. Presently, the scene is at the ashram of Karma and Devahuti. It's quite a scene. Um, Lord Brahma has come to pay them a visit. Brahma is the father of Karma, and Brahma is the father of Devahuti's father. And accompanying him are great sages and demigods at least in the painting of this scene it shows Narada the four Kumaras it's quite an entourage accompanying Lord Brahma and then not just Devahuti and Kardama it's also their nine daughters because before Kapila Dev took his birth, nine daughters, born all at once, must have been an interesting experience for Devahuti. Nine daughters all at once were born. And they're now of a mature stage, and uh, Kapila Dev, just in the beginning parts of this chapter. So the end of the, end of the previous chapter, 23. The daughters have been born. Devahuti is uh, expressing profound humility. In this humility, she's expressing, I've just become attached to being an enjoyer of family life. Although for tens of thousands of years, she's been living on next to nothing in the forest with her husband, assisting him. Um, anyway, profound humility, essentially saying the most important thing I've forgotten to have the association of a person of so qualified as you, what to speak of as my husband, I've not sought from you the means to achieve liberation. I simply have become entangled in the complexities of family life. And she speaks in, in that way several verses. That's how 23 ends, Devahuti's Lamentation. And then 24 begins, Karnama pacifies her, saying, you're speaking words of hum humility, but you're an exalted personality. And of course, he's capable of doing anything and everything. He's already demonstrated that, but he's, his response is, very soon, within your womb, Lord Vishnu will take shelter. He knows that because Lord Vishnu told him that's what's going to happen before it happened. And he will deliver you by his strong teachings. And Kapila Dev is then within the womb of Devahuti, that's when the scene comes. Lord Brahma comes. He says wonderful things to Kardama about his exalted nature. He, although he's his son, he's worshipping his son because he's worshipable, just as the Lord is worshipable because you're the father of 
Lord Vishnu has no father. Pretty good. Because of uh, you, and mentioned is also there. <coughs> Dear Violika, your <coughs> unpretentious penances and following the instructions that I've given you, you perfect. You have all my blessings. And um, he then speaks to Kardama about the name, the form, the qualities, and the activities of the child that's yet to be born. He'll have golden hair, his eyes will look like this, his feet will look like that. He's going to travel throughout the world and do different give these same teachings to the world as he will give to Devahuti and then um, he turns to Devahuti so that's where we are two verses Lord Brahma then told Devahuti my dear daughter of Manu the same Supreme Personality of Godhead who killed the demon Kaitaba is now within your womb. He will cut off all the knots of your ignorance and doubt. He, then, he will travel all over the world. No details about the travel all over the world, just as it's going to do it. Purport. Here, the word avidya is very significant. Avidya means forgetfulness of one's own identity. Every one of us is a spirit soul, but we have forgotten. We think, I have this body. This is called avidya. Sangshaya granti means doubtfulness. The knot, grunty, the knot of doubtfulness is tied when the soul identifies with the material world. That knot is called ahunkara, the jurisdiction, excuse me, the junction of matter and spirit. By proper knowledge received from the scriptures in disciplic succession and by proper application of that knowledge, one can get, one can free himself from this binding combination of matter and spirit. Brahma assures Devahuti that her son will enlighten her, and after enlightening her, he will travel all over the world distributing the system of Sankhya philosophy. Paragraph. The word Sankshaya twice mentioned, means doubtful knowledge, taking another approach. Speculative and pseudo-yogic knowledge is all doubtful. At the present moment, the so-called yoga system is prosec prosecuted on the understanding that by agitation of the different stations of the bodily construction, one can find that he is God. The mental speculators think similarly, but they are all doubtful. Real knowledge is expounded in Bhagavad Gita. Quote, just become Krishna conscious. Just worship Krishna and become a devotee of Krishna. Unquote. That is real knowledge, and anyone who follows that system becomes perfect without a doubt. So, avidya sankshaya granti. Text 19, this is, only these two verses are cited as what he said to Devahuti. Your son will be the head of all perfected souls. He will be approved by the Acharyas, expert in disseminating real knowledge, and among the people. He will be celebrated by the name Kapila. As the son of Devahuti, he will increase your fame. Report. 
accord. Sankhya philosophy is the philosophical system enunciated by Kapila, the son of Devahuti. The other Kapila, who is not the son of Devahuti, is an imitation. This is the statement of Brahma, and because we belong to Brahma's disciplic succession, we should accept his statement that the real Kapila is the son of Devahuti, and that the real Sankhya philosophy is the system of philosophy which he introduced and which will be accepted by the acharyas. The directors of, dis of spiritual discipline. The word susamata means accepted by persons who are counted upon to give their good opinion. Sankshaya Granthim is very similar to the language from Canto 1, Chapter 2. Radaya Granthi. The Granthi means not, and the not of Sankshaya. Sankshaya means doubt. The not of doubt or doubtfulness is cut. Now, In the Canto 1, Chapter 2, it's the bhakti process is that which, like a sword in hand, cuts the knot. Prabhupada's language there, the knot of the internet. And here is explaining that. That's the conjunction of matter and spirit. The, the binding force is avidya. That's the knot. And the sword is vidya, but it's not just vidya, it's vidya that's applied. Earlier in this section, where it's describing, uh, Brahma is describing what to Kardama, what Kapila will do, he also uses the word vidya. Prabhupada explains, vidya means knowledge received in disciplic succession. Just like in chapter 12, Bhagavad Gita, that sequence that says, this is the topmost, if you can't do that, follow the regulations of Bhakti, if you can't do that, try to work for me, if you can't do that, cultivate knowledge and be situated in the self. Whoops. Um, act with detached work and be, be situated in the self. You can't do that. Cultivate knowledge. So cultivate knowledge is below renunciation, the fruits of work. But specifically, the cultivation of knowledge doesn't mean you go to a university or something or read books, become a bookworm. It means receiving knowledge through disciplic succession and the the purpose of that, or the effectiveness of that, is its application, which is here. Prabhupada is twice saying it, application, application. Because without application, what will knowledge do? To some degree, to a very limited degree, uh, detachment. But to a very limited degree, because attachment is still going to follow there's a, a nice verse in um, Canto 6, Chapter 2, where um, Shukadeva Goswami is describing the bhakti process and says it's only by the bhakti process that this, when this knot can be cut because the other processes, they serve as elevation, but after some time because of that affinity for matter, again one finds oneself back again. It's incomplete. Something, but incomplete. And in the spiritual marketplace, 
today. There's lots of cheaters and there's lots of things that are incomplete. Systems that indicate to one there's, could someone close that door? The, uh, there, there is higher consciousness. There's a plane of higher consciousness. One student, kind of funny, he was embarrassed, but he wanted to share it anyways, that he started experimenting with mushrooms. And a certain kind of mushroom grown in a certain way, da 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 da, da and voila, there's higher consciousness. And he thought he wouldn't come back, but he came back. So whether it's yoga, meditation, using what Prabhupada is, you know, exercising parts of the body so you become God, without knowledge and disciplic succession, there's some kind of, obviously he went searching for what he was, whatever he was looking for, higher consciousness, in a way that a person that doesn't have proper guidance would do. And, and then it makes, it's a little difficult. I'm, he's a sincere young man. Maybe he'll make the transition from mushrooms to Krishna. But then one gets an attachment for whatever that experience was. And then the medium for getting to that experience. But it's artificial, and the, the connection with, without shelter in Krishna, knowledge, meditation, or any other, this Canto 6, Chapter 2 verse, it can serve to elevate, Prabhupada calls this high grade activities. It gives an indication of something higher, which one has some faith in before going down that path anyway. But there's no, without shelter of the Supreme Lord through the medium of devotional service, not just meditation and trying to fix one's mind on the Supreme. Fix the mind on super soul. It's engaging in devotional service. That, that's coming in, in Kapila's teachings. He teaches Sankhya, following that meditation, following meditation, devotional service. His teaching is devotional service, although the emphasis what's accredited to him is Sankhya. The purpose of Sankhya is ultimately de pure devotional service. Meditate on what? If it's, it's Satya Yuga, meditation, Dhyayate, on what? So Sankhya helps one to understand what, and also the cut, the misidentification not with what, what or not, what misconception of life is. Krishna does the same in Bhagavad Gita, Kapila does the same in his teachings. And Devahuti is informed by Brahma, as she was informed by her husband, Kapila Dev is going to assist you so, Sankshaya Granti, Avidya Sankshaya Granti. These words are similar, but obviously they're not identical because they're different words. Avidya is ignorance. Prabhupada, in the language is almost, you know, accepting false ego. It's ignorant to accept false ego, but here we are accepting this connection between the soul and who we really are, excuse me, this between the soul and who we really aren't, and to make that step is ignorance. So what's the counter to ignorance is knowledge. Once again, knowledge has to be applied. And when knowledge is properly applied, it awakens bhakti. Proper knowledge properly applied awakens bhakti. And it's bhakti that can cut. So the statement is that the knowledge will cut, but it's bhakti that will cut permanently. 
as we hear later. It dissolves the subtle body. It takes a while. Pretty strong, tenacious, subtle body, mind, false ego, very strong. Bhakti has that power. So that's, that's what's going to happen. He indicates to her his name, Kapila. He indicates that he's Lord Vishnu, specifically Lord Vishnu who killed Kaitaba. We are, we're more commonly here about Madhu, Madhu and Kaitaba. They are two demons that stole the Vedas from Brahma and Lord Vishnu killed Madhu and Kaitaba. So that, that same person, he's in your womb. Don't be mistaken. So when he comes, you'll know what to do. And the other verse purport, uh, something standard that Prabhupada would speak about Kapila Dev, Devahuti Putra Kapila, the son of Devahuti, because I don't know so much about him, maybe some of you have heard about him. A more recent version called himself Kapila or his parents called him Kapila. And he also taught Sankhya, but it's an atheistic Sankhya. And um, scholars, Western scholars and Indian scholars, they like Sankhya, atheistic Sankhya. It, it it's, fits in completely with mechanistic science perspective. That is, there's only one thing, matter. And the laws that govern matter, and that's it. So learn the laws that govern matter, and Sankhya helps one understand the laws that govern matter, and you got it. It's everything. And you don't need God in the picture because he's irrelevant. Because all there is is one thing. So scientists and speculative philosophers like it. And so it's, it has its popularity. And therefore, consistently, 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 and right in this purport, this Kapila, our Kapila, spoken by Brahma, who is our authority in our disciplic succession, is the son of Devahuti, not this other fellow. And the teachings of Kapila, son of Devahuti, taught devotional service is the fruit of Sankhya, not become one with God, is the fruit of Sankhya. And so Sankhya, uh, yeah, actually I don't even know. If it's atheistic Sankhya, I don't know what the goal of it is. Maybe it's impersonal, but it's, it's atheistic in any case, atheistic. Just some appreciation, two, two things. Uh, Prabhupada was preparing his reader for um, dangers on the spiritual path that we had no idea they were even out there. Atheist Kapila, never heard of the fellow. But at some point, I'm sure we're gonna run into it. That it'll be hit the internet and it'll be what people talk about because they, they, they like it. No God. Matter and the laws governing matter. And another is that Prabhupada is not pointing to himself, but Lord Brahma, his son Kardama Muni, and Kapila Dev are all doing the same thing that Prabhupada did. He doesn't draw attention to himself, he's the servant or the instrument of the predecessor acharyas and great personalities and the personality of Godhead, but he traveled the world to Sangshaya Granti 
or Vridaya Granti, to give this bhakti process that takes away avidya and gives freedom. Compassionate. Very clear what, what real compassion is, what real service to humanity, etc. is. It's cut the knot of avidya through the bhakti process. Without the, the anecdotal stories, Prabhupada declared that was his mission, is to remind people of who they really are, because they've forgotten. And that's, that's it, in a short phrase, it, it says a lot, because to remind people of what they have forgotten, it requires letting go of the misconceptions, and which we hold on to very tightly. So there's a strong effort to misconception, misconception again and again, and just keep cutting. And then awakening bhakti by the various methods of awakening bhakti. And the combination is remembering who we really are, like waking up from susupti, coming out of amnesia. And, oh, now I remember who I am. It takes a while. But that's what he was administering. Very effectively and very compassionately and abundantly. And this Srimad Bhagavatam is such a, such a literature specifically for that purpose also. Very wonderful. What a magnanimous gift giver to the world that he didn't even know, but he knew the circumstance and was compassionate, sacrificed everything for that purpose, teaching people who they really are, you know, in a simple phrase. Any discussion? Anyone? Oh, there's, there's discussion. Hang on. Maharaj, uh, we don't hear much about Kapila Dev besides Srimad Bhagavatam. Where else can we get some references? Well, I did a bit, a little bit of research. Um, I made a I have a little PowerPoint presentation on Kapila because, oh, so there's not a lot, but a, a one place, a, a, a major place is Lagu Bhagavatamrita. Lagu Bhagavatamrita is a book by Rupa Goswami that primarily focuses on the answer to one of the six questions. That is the forms of the Lord as they appear in this world. And it's, you know, it covers it in different, different, different angles. So he's, it's not all in one section. It's in different, different sections. There's information about Kapila. It's not elaborated. It just makes reference. Who he taught. It doesn't say, you know, the circumstance, but who he taught. Brigu, Tatatreya, Asuri Brahmana. Doesn't sound very nice. But Asuri Brahman has mentioned in Ramayana that he went to the court of King Janaka and he gave the teachings of Kapila Dev to King Janak. So he wasn't like an Asura, that just somehow he got that name. And we hear about Kapila in connection with the descent of the Ganges, the sons of Sagara went to retrieve the horse of Sagara and they found the horse at Kapila's ashram at the bottom of the universe so that was one of the places that he spent some time there's like that description in Ramayana and also in the Bhagavatam but specifically when uh, in Lago Bhagavatamrita the category 
of Kapila is there's two or three things. He's in a category of forms of the Lord that are Vishnu Tattva. They give teachings. There's no information of their consort and there's very little spoken about them. Those four things. So you want references? There's very little about them. <laughs> but Rupa Goswami gathered it in Lagu Bhagavatam. Guru Maharaj. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. So it took tens of thousands of years for Kapila Dev, I mean for Devahuti to have Kapila Dev as her son and to be enlightened by him. And considering that, you know, that era or that age, it was, even though it was tens of thousands of years, it was still family life with under regulative principles. Sure. Contrasting that with where we are, and we have much shorter lives, and so much more in terms of indulgence, in terms of material activities, what are the ramifications for the general populace to be able to overcome that? Because devotees are so fortunate, whereas the non-devotees are not. We don't have Kapila Dev, we, you know, the general populace I'm talking about. What are the ramifications and, and the impl implications for Kali Yuga as it gets worse and worse? Well, your question is one of the six questions. Kalair, Dojanad, Hey, Rajan. So, uh, in this age of Kali, people, uh, anyway. That the recommendation is the, the hearing and chanting process and to do it daily and do it in a sustained manner and to do it with great faith there's there's potency that's very special now doesn't say it's not to say people didn't do that in previous ages that's the benediction for this age that the holy name and the hearing and chanting process. Now, the, imp the implication is uh, not just the behavior, we're, we're fortunate to have the facility but take advantage of the facility in a quality way and give the opportunity to others as our capacity permits. Now, it may be gradual like lifetimes kind of gradual or it may be more swift and a lot depends on our effort and Krishna's mercy but we have to work with what we have to work with and we can give to others what we have and so we try to receive and try to give now the another I, mean, I guess you know an implication the response to the implication question is it's, it's a tall mountain and it may take a while tall mountains and take some practice to climb the tall mountain just don't just okay and you will make it to the top so practice over a period of time with great faith and, qu and then qualifications that we can't otherwise even conceive of may be bestowed upon us to do amazing things for Krishna by empowerment. The, the process is very powerful. And so it's, if the, the implication is, uh, especially as, as we recognize with honesty and therefore the proper kind of humility, um, I'm very tiny and it's the mountain is big but let me try and then calling upon Krishna for his mercy that's that's our and then others be an instrument to help others especially in collaboration with other Vaishnavas 
It's the synergy principle. Together we can do much more than any one of us alone. And then comes the, 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 the difficulty. Well, when we come together, we have our shortcomings and they have their shortcomings and the other one has their shortcomings. We come together with our shortcomings and it's a little chaotic. But then, you know, the, the higher principle. So those that see the higher principle and encourage, etc., etc., get trained to take shelter of the higher principle can go beyond those shortcomings and then take up the, 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 the activities in a quality way that will help us, not them, but help us overcome our shortcomings. That helps the whole Sangha of Vaishnavas as one becomes purified and elevated, the whole Sangha of Vaishnavas benefit and we can celebrate. Implications. Hare Krishna Maharaj. <laughs> uh, I mean, from the earlier chapters, we understand that uh, I mean, Mother Devahuti is a very realized personality. Yes. And uh, I mean, what is the uh, ignorance that uh, Lord Brahma is talking about? What is the ignorance that's being talked about? It's a, <clears throat> it's a little bit like Arjuna in the sense that it was, a, it was arranged by Krishna that Arjuna would get bewildered and not exactly the same because it's not exactly that Devahuti is bewildered but she's speaking that way, she's feeling that way, it's not cute, she's feeling that way. <clears throat> and so through Devahuti, Kapila Deva is teaching. And that means Kapila Deva is teaching the world just like through teaching Arjuna, Krishna was teaching the world. And here we have it. And that, that kind of a vidya. The Krishna created kind, not that you know, she fell into Maya kind. Yeah. Maharaj, the differentiation of like um, the Shaivite and uh, Vishnuite, is this some kind of groupism that uh, developed as uh, Aliuga progressed or is it some bona fide thing? And how to guide somebody who say, calls themselves as a Shaivite? What was the first part of your question I couldn't follow? The group there, I, I see there's two. And then what was your question? Is it some kind of groupism that developed, uh, like, you know, uh, Hinduism is not a bona fide terminology. It uh, developed something like people who uh, they okay. call. Okay. Yeah, something like that. Is it some kind of groupism that developed as Kaliuga progressed, people calling themselves as Shaivites, Vishnuites, and all that? Or is it something bona fide? I don't know if it's either. <laughs> it, it, it's um, terminology indicates, just like the discussion yesterday evening, there are, you know, there are trends and there are trends of people that are, they like Lord Shiva. And so the term indicates they like Lord Shiva. And there's literatures that um, honor Lord Shiva and indicate how to honor Lord Shiva and so forth and so on. And they like that for a variety of reasons. So is it bona fide? Well, it's, yes, it's bona fide that they like Lord Shiva. Which is different than the term Hindu, which is there's, there's no substance to it. It, it. Anyway, without going there, you know what the, the term means. It's people who are, who are living on the other side of the Sindhu River. That's the Hindus. So, and follow the Vedas and the persons that follow the Vedas. It's, it's, there are various 
categories, or using your term, groups, that follow the Vedas. And there's subgroups of those groups. Some want elevation to the heavenly planets. Some have their favorite heavenly planet. Some say it's all, all planets are the same. Anyway, and then impersonalism and accepting monotheism, worshiping nature, worshiping ghosts, worshiping you know, modes of nature. The variegatedness is all over the place. And that's people that follow the Vedas, the, that group of people on the other side of the, the Sindhu River. So categorizing the, the persons who follow in different ways and then subsets of those ways, that's just a function of an intellect. You discern this from that and this has this name and that has that name. And not exactly not bona fide or bona fide, it's just categorization. Like Shakta worshippers. So it's a category. And then there's divisions in that category. Yes? Oops. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Uh, regarding that knot of the doubtfulness, uh, with the process of chanting and hearing, do we experience the knot being loosened gradually? Or well, well, you should ask, answer that question yourself. <laughs> the reason I'm asking, I feel it's becoming stronger and stronger. Or maybe I'm, <laughs> maybe I'm perceiving... The well, I, I, and let me just reply that you wouldn't even be asking this question if you weren't chanting. You wouldn't even understand what's going on if you weren't chanting. Now, you may become more aware that that's there through chanting and the cultivation of knowledge. Using Vedic language, you can then see pots and plates. You can see, you know, what's around you and what's within you better as a result of and that's a step in the direction of removal. Because without even recognizing the pots and plates, what are you going to do? You stumble around in darkness. All right? I just had a comment, I guess, my thought, like with this whole discussion, my thoughts went to just how um, Jiva Goswami talks about in that first canto verse about karma granti, uh, mm. the, 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 that part, he speaks about the doubts at three levels. Mm -hmm. And he says like the doubts about uh, the existence of absolute truth and the possibility of attaining him, that can be removed by hearing. <clears throat> and then he says that there's also doubts about, oh, maybe I need to do some other process, uh, karma or jnana or something. Yeah. And, you know, he says that can be removed by meditation. I remember how once one that devotee... That can be resolved by meditation? Meditation. And, like, <laughs> one time one devotee went to Prabhupada and he said, oh, maybe I should really be realizing Brahman or something. And Prabhupada's response was, have you been chanting your rounds, 16 rounds, attentively? And so that's like for us, I guess, like that meditation. Mm -hmm. And then there's doubts also about personal uh, disqualification. And he says that can be completely removed only when we see the Lord. So I, I just nice. thought to share <laughs> in this context, even like her question about um, it seems like it's just increasing or something. And then sometimes devotees go through these phases. Well, I myself have gone through those phases where we feel like, oh, maybe I should do this healing or that yoga or that something, some karma jnana process. But when one is 
really practicing the process attentively with sincerity, then those kind of doubts can actually be removed. So if you wanted to comment further on that, Maharaj. Well, as you were speaking, it, it, uh, um, connected to uh, not having full faith, which is a doubt, or generates doubts, not having full faith. Uh, again, Jiva Goswami comments about King Nriga. He was a bhakta, and he wanted to see Krishna, and he got to see Krishna. But uh, he had one foot in two different boats. He also felt, well, maybe I should do some acts of piety because that'll help my bhakti. So he did this program of giving away cows to and, and a massive number of cows. Now there's nothing wrong with giving charity to brahmanas. The Vaishnavas certainly can do that. But his intention was it, would, it'll, it will augment my bhakti just in case. Without simply could have, he could have done the same activity with full faith in bhakti. This will be pleasing to Krishna. Krishna loves the brahmanas. And so I want to serve the brahmanas so Krishna will be pleased. It was with another intention. So he had a little problem as a result. And Jiva Goswami's analysis was that was the, that was the anartha, not having full faith. It's so similar to this first canto, chapter two discussion. Subtle. And we have to uh, introspect and recalibrate according. And if we don't, the, the full effect will not come. The full effect potential is there. Refining and refining is, is, is important. Anything else? Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Regarding uh, Sankhya itself. Regarding yeah. Sankhya itself. So, yeah, I mean, I'm very ill read, but um, when we speak about it, uh, that uh, the differentiation between matter and spirit and some counting up so 24 elements and then can you please say a few sentences I mean what is in nutshell the Sankhya philosophy what was the last part don't say the whole thing just the last sentence um, a few se a few sentences what is Sankhya philosophy the nutshell description you want to know what it is? Yes. A little few words on yes. what it is. Yes, sir. Chapter 26. It's the Sankhya philosophy section of uh, Kapila's teachings. And it's really intricate. Um, I'll say this, although <coughs> matter is called Krishna's bina prakriti, a separated energy, in another sense, it doesn't, it's not an absolute sense of separated, it's his energy and it exists and rests upon him. And so in Sankhya philosophy, there's this very elaborate from subtle to more gross, 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 to more gross. And then the combination of all of them makes the cosmos, or at least the ingredients for the cosmos, which then Brahma assembles because he knows how to assemble it. But if there's 
cause and effect that then becomes the cause of another effect and, and so forth. And it's, it's connected to the source, the energetic. So Sankhya is recognizing the energetic connections with the energy, using the energy for its int higher intended purpose. One intended purpose is living entities will have a chance to be in Maya, to try to become the enjoyer of Prakriti, and here is Prakriti, without any rec recognition of, w w due to ignorance of Vidya, without recognition of the source and the controlling influence of that source. The Sankhya makes it very clear that the, the details of the unfolding of, of the elements and the connection of those elements with their, their higher purpose. Because once all the, at, at the end of that chapter, 26, here's all the elements. In just two, two verses, Kapila then says, and one should meditate on Vishnu because he's the controller of that. And then, w and while meditating upon Vishnu, one should engage in his service. You know, that, that requires some unpacking, but that's what Sankhya philosophy is. It's the, you can say, Sambandha again, it's, the, it's the, the substantive description of the relation of all things with the source of emanation. That when it's understood properly and you act upon it, then you meditate upon the source of those elements and engage in devotional service to the source of those elements using those elements properly, acknowledging their source and their purpose. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.